for this next lesson on rational functions we're not really going to do anything new uh, the focus of this lesson is on order of operations in English one of the ways that we learn when we're young to uh, remember our order of operations is this bed mass which is known as a mnemonic it has these letters to help us remember the order so the B stands for brackets the E stands for exponents and the really important part actually is down here division and multiplication are at the same order of precedence meaning that they're equally important to each other and so when you are doing an evaluation using division and multiplication both of these come before addition and subtraction but when it comes to each other you just do them in order from left to right so if you have something like a times b divided by c you would do the multiplication first and you would do the division second so it doesn't matter how convenient this is you might look at this and say oh but b divided by c is actually something a lot easier i can get that done and out of the way if you do that you are going to actually introduce an error into your work so you have to do operations at the same level of precedence in order from left to right same thing is true for addition and subtraction if you have a plus b minus c you have to do the addition first and you have to do the subtraction second if you try to do it the other way around you're actually changing the problem to make it look if you try to do the subtraction first what you've done is you have artificially put in a set of brackets now in this case because it's addition that actually wouldn't cause a problem but let's imagine that I had a minus b plus c let's do it that way that's a better example if I do the b plus c first now I've created a larger number and I'm going to subtract that and you can always use real numbers 3 minus 4 plus 5 3 minus 4 is negative 1 plus 5 and then add 5 to that you end up with positive 4 3 minus 4 plus 5 but I decide to do the plus 5 first 3 minus 4 plus 5 is 9 I end up with negative 6 this was wrong this was the correct way to do it which was to do the operations in order of precedence from left to right okay so let's go ahead and move on to some examples of this so in this case let's focus on order of operations first I've got a subtraction and I have an addition so this is like that example I gave the thing you cannot do here is you can't do this addition first even though you might think of that as being more convenient so the order that we have to do things is the subtraction followed by the addition now I'm not going to do either of those things yet because what I want to show you first of all is that we can put all of this stuff together into a common denominator and then we'll deal with our order of operations when it's more appropriate so what am I going to do common denominators require me to put everything into factored form so this first denominator is x minus 2 times x plus 2 minus x minus 2 the denominator of this second term is factorable with a common factor of x x plus 2 plus this third term numerator is x plus 2 and the denominator is also factorable using a common factor of x and this one has x times x minus 2 now I'm going to figure out my lowest common denominator and I go looking for terms so here's an x minus 2 so I write x minus 2 this is x minus 2 to the power 1 this is also x minus 2 to the power 1 so that's taken care of there's an x plus 2 here and there's one there so that takes care of that and then there's an x here and an x here each of them is to the power 1 so I'm going to put that in front just by convention normally we write single terms like this in front or single factors 
So there's my lowest common denominator. So that means this whole expression is going to have a denominator of x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. What you have to ask yourself is, what did I have to... So let's take a look at this first numerator. It's an x. The denominator, what was missing from this denominator in terms of the lowest common denominator? It has an x minus 2, it has an x plus 2, it's missing an x. So that means that we had to multiply the denominator by x, which means we also have to multiply the numerator by x. Minus the second numerator is x minus 2. Now, take a look at this denominator. It's got an x in it. It has an x plus 2, which means the part that it was missing was an x minus 2. So we have to multiply the numerator by x minus 2. Plus the third numerator is x plus 2. And now we take a look at the denominator. x times x minus 2. The factor that was missing was x plus 2. So I have to multiply this by x plus 2. Now that I've done that, I can, once again, I'm just going to write my denominator. This denominator, unless I have a common factor that I can divide out with the numerator, I'm just going to continue to write the denominator this way. x times x gives me x squared. That's the from the first numerator. I'm going to keep this minus sign, and I'm going to evaluate the second numerator in this bracket. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the third numerator. So I'm, And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to be very conscientious about these operators. In this case, it's a subtraction and addition. So x minus 2 times x minus 2, that's a perfect square. That's x squared minus 4x plus 4 x plus 2 times x plus 2 is another perfect square. That's x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now, I think you, I'm going to take one extra step. I don't think this step is entirely necessary, depending on how good your algebra is. But it's probably better to be safe than sorry here. So x squared. Now I take the fact that this is negative 1 times this entire bracket and I expand it out. So negative 1 times x squared becomes minus x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4x becomes positive 4x. Negative 1 times positive 4 is negative 4. This kind of error where students are not careful with the idea that this negative applies to the entire bracket is where I see a lot of careless mistakes and marks lost on students work where they actually know what they're doing but they're making little algebraic errors that are costing them in the end. This one is positive 1 in front of the bracket so that's easy enough it's just rewriting all of those terms so that's going to be plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 and that's over once again you're going to get tired of writing out these denominators but you do have to write them on every line and now I can group like terms. x squared minus x squared plus x squared is just equal to an x squared. 4x plus 4x gives me 8x. And negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0 over that common denominator. Now I can factor this numerator, and you, and you really should factor it, because we're always looking for an opportunity where we can simplify this expression further if maybe there's a common factor between the numerator and denominator. In this case there isn't. I take out a common factor of x, I end up with x plus 8 over x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And as you can see there are no common factors. Uh, I, it says to state any restrictions when I go back and take a look, I didn't divide out anything between numerator and denominator. So that means that all of the factors that were in denominators at the start are still in the denominator. So they're in this final denominator. And so that means my restrictions are x is not allowed to be equal to 0, positive 2, or negative 2, which I can write more concisely 
as plus or minus 2. For this next exercise, we actually now have to worry about order of operations because this division absolutely has to occur first. Uh, I'm still going to do a lot of what I've done the same way as I have in the past. I do recognize though that this part has to be resolved first. So this first term is 2 over x, that doesn't change and that's actually a pretty simple term that I've given you minus this second term which is this entire operation is uh, already factored x minus 2 x plus 1 x minus 3 x plus 1 these are already factored so what I should do now is I should change this second term into a multiplication instead of a division so x minus 2 over x plus 1 now it's going to be multiplied by I hate to use an x when I'm uh, when I'm using variables of x for multiplication. So I'll use a dot instead. And now I take the reciprocal of that divisor and I end up with x plus 1 over x minus 3. I'm going to take the trouble to write out an extra step here, which you wouldn't necessarily have to do, which is I'm now going to combine these things together. When I have a fraction times another fraction, it's numerator times numerator, which is x minus 2 times x plus 1 over over x plus 1 times x minus 3 and the reason I took the time to write this is it's just a little bit clearer especially because I wrote these as factors with brackets it's just a little bit clearer that the factor x plus 1 divides into the factor x plus 1 one time each so this actually results in a greatly simplified 2 over x minus, and now the second term has simplified to x minus 2 over x minus 3. And now we can deal with the idea of our lowest common denominator. Our lowest common denominator is going to have an x multiplied by an x minus 3. So now my lowest common denominator is x times x minus 3. I had a 2 here. And what did I have to multiply this x by to get this denominator? I had to multiply by x minus 3. So it becomes 2 times x minus 3 minus x minus 2. And what did I have to multiply this denominator x minus 3 by? I had to multiply it by x. So this x minus 2 gets multiplied by x. Carrying on with this, I'm going to take an extra step here. The numerator of the first term, 2 times x minus 3, becomes 2x minus 6. I'll put that in my first bracket. Minus, and now I'm going to fill in the second bracket doing this second multiplication. x times x is x squared negative 2 times x is minus 2x over x times x minus 3 equals once again denominator x times x minus 3 and now I think I can do this I'm going to look for the highest order terms which are the x squared so this is negative 1 times x squared which is just negative x squared this is 2x times or sorry 2x minus negative 2x, which is the same as 2x plus 2x, which is plus 4x. And I have the last value is just a number, that's negative 6. You should be asking yourself whether or not you can factor this. I'm going to do that in rough work off to the side. Negative x squared plus 4x minus 6. It might be more convenient to factor out that negative sign. So that becomes x squared minus 4x plus 6 with the negative in front. And now we want to ask ourselves, thinking about the sum and product, we have a sum of negative 4. The product is 1 times 6, which is 6. Are there two numbers that multiply together to give me 6 and add to give me negative 4? And the answer to that is no, which means this is actually in its final form. 
So this is as far as we can go. We cannot factor any further. We need to write our restrictions. We have a restriction that x is not equal to 0. We have a restriction that x is not equal to 3. But we're not done yet because we have to consider any factor that was ever in a denominator. So let's go, and it's always a good idea to go all the way back to the beginning. So what factors did we have that were in a denominator that are going to cause a restriction? We've got a restriction here with this x. We've got a restriction here with this x plus 1, which is the same as this restriction on this x plus 1. And then because we took the reciprocal of the divisor, we also have a restriction here on x minus 3. So my list of restrictions that I can see up here are x is not equal to 0, x is not equal to negative 1, and x is not equal to positive 3. In our final answer, we had the 0 and we had the 3, but the one we are missing is the negative 1. Okay, so that's it. Short lesson, just reminding you, or not reminding you, but pointing out to you some of the extra things you need to consider when you are starting to combine operations that might have different precedents. In this example, we had subtraction and division. There are some assigned questions, also just a couple of additional questions for some extra practice.